the supported payment methods are there. If your account is denied for any reason, just try and change the payment method and use a different email until it succeeds. And even if it doesn't, just contact them and tell them you're trying to create an account, things are not working out, tell them your use case and they will create the account for you. Let's go and log in. To log in, I'll, I'll just go to accounts.hetsna.com and that should redirect you to log in and log in or you can reset your password right there. When you log in, you'll see your account details there. You can change your settings right there, your profile, account settings. If you want to go to cloud or any of the other Hetzner services, you'll just click here and you can see you have the different services there. As I said, we are interested in cloud and I'm just going to click there on cloud. If it is a new account, you're not going to see any project, but you can create one. So a project is a way for you to group your different resources. If you have servers, IP addresses, storage, or any other thing that you can create under the cloud environment for Hetzner, it will be under a specific project. If you want to create a new one, just click on new project, give it a name and add the project. Let's go to create a server. You can go into the project. You can go into a specific project and if you have any resources, you can find them here. Let's just create a server and then we're going to see how to log into that server. And I'm going to deploy an Ubuntu server. You can deploy any server that is available on the Hetzner dashboard. So if you want to deploy a new server, you can just click there on servers and you're going to see you don't have any servers. You can click add server. So if you click there, add server, I can deploy my server in a specific location. Let's say I want mine to be in Falkenstein, that is in Germany. You can choose any of these other data centers. And then the image, choose the Linux OS that you want for your server. If you want to change the version for Ubuntu, you can deploy Ubuntu 22.04. If you want Debian, Debian 11, you can come here under Debian and choose a Debian there. So I'm going to go with Ubuntu, but I will go with Ubuntu 22.04. And then the type. So I'm going to go with that. And I can choose either x86, which is Intel or AMD, or I can go with ARM processors. So you can go with this, they're much cheaper. But I'm just going to go with these ones. If you are hosting a website, I would suggest just try the ARM processors and see how they perform for your site. You'll find that there's no major difference for certain services, but there are certain things if you want to do with your server, you should just stick with Intel and AMD. So in this case, I'm just going to go with Intel or AMD. So I can just go with the CPX21, which is three virtual CPUs, AMD and 4GB RAM. If you want to run WordPress and it is just a small blog, you can even start with the one CPU Intel processor. If it is just a small blog, I just go with ARM64 processor, go with the first one, see how it performs. I can assure you it may not even be that different. For me, I'm going to go with three vCPU AMD with 4GB of RAM. And then networking. So you can actually create your VPS to be private, to be private. And if you want it to be private, you can enable private and even disable public IPv4 and public IPv6 addresses. This way you can create a network of virtual servers that will talk to each other and will not be accessible online. So especially if you want to work with Kubernetes, this is something that you should do. You should create a private network and then create your virtual servers in those private networks. So in this case, of course, I'm just going to leave the public IP address and then SSH key. Now, if you want to use SSH, you can use SSH. If I disable SSH, you're going to see there's this message here and it's telling me that they are going to send me the root password to my email. It is recommended that you use an SSH key. Let me just show you quickly how to create an SSH key and add it to Hetna and then use it to log into your server. So I'm just going to create a new SSH key. I'm going to click there to add it and then we're going to use that to log into our server. 
if you're following with me on Windows, you'll need to download Git and then open up Git Bash. I already have Git Bash installed and I'm not going to go through this process again because it's not a difficult process. If you want to generate an SSH key, as I said, follow along with me on Git Bash if you're in Windows. If you're on a Mac or Linux, just use the terminal application that comes with your operating system. So let's see how to generate an SSH key. So I'm just going to do SSH, SSH, key gen dash T. This is for the type. And I want to generate a key of type ED25519 key. I want to generate it with a file name. And this is going to store it in this directory. There, you can store it in any directory. But I want to put it in dot SSH directory. SSH directory inside of this directory so if this directory where you want to store it doesn't exist you can create it using mkdr with the path to the different folders you want in that directory directories i already have inside here so i'm just going to do tab twice and it's going to list if you press the tab twice it's going to list the folders which are there and i want to do it in tutorials so i'm going to do tutorials i'll start typing press tab to to complete that and I'll just leave it inside of that directory. And I want to give the keys a name with the name of new key heads. So that's the name of my key. I can press enter and the key will be generated inside of this directory with that name. You can enter a passphrase. I'm not going to enter a passphrase, but enter a passphrase. I did a video about why you should not share your SSH keys. You should find that video, watch it and see why it's important and see why it's important to have a passphrase for your private SSH key. So I'm just going to press enter and enter again and the key is now generated. All right, so we have our SSH key. Now the next thing, let's copy our private key and the links to your keys are here. You can see your public key has been saved here. Your private key has been saved there. So I'm just going to copy the link to my private key to my public key, I mean, this is the one that you need to copy to Hetzna. So I can just do Control L to clear the screen. I have Visual Studio Code installed on my system. So I can just do code with the link to the key. Uh, now to paste inside of Gitbash, you do Shift Insert. To paste inside of Terminal on Linux, usually it's Control Shift V unless you've changed it. I'm going to press Enter and that's going to open VS Code. Then I can copy the key. So I'm going to copy that. Copy the public key. Then bring it back to Hetzner. And I'm just going to add SSH key. Paste that key in there. And I can give it a name. Just call it new key tutorial. You can even set it as the default key. But I'm just going to add SSH key. So you can see that you can even add two SSH keys but I'm just going to use this one. And then you can add volumes. Volumes are volumes are additional SSD storage that you can attach to your disk. It's like attaching an extra disk to your VPS. So if you click there to create a volume, you can choose the size. You can see they're pretty affordable. 10 GB is that. You can go, maybe you want one for just $1 a month, one euro a month, I mean. You can see that would be 22 GB. If you scroll down, you're going to see that you can create it and it will get attached. So as long as you create this, you'll still get billed for it. You can calculate the price there for your disk. So I'm just going to cancel. I'm going to cancel. You can also create, you can also add a volume later on. Now firewalls, I'm going to do another video for how to secure your SSH. And when I'm doing that video, I'm going to show you something that you can do with firewall on your cloud provider. In this case, I'm not going to do this here, but when I do that video, I'm going to show you why having this can be beneficial. And then backups, backups are charged at 20% of the server price. With it, without it, with it, you can see the price there. And then placement groups, you can group multiple servers into placement groups. I'm not going to do this, but it's something you can do. You can also create labels for your different servers and labels are important in that you can use them to automatically add various resources together and you can just click there to learn more about how to create the labels so when you create a label you can use it to attach specific servers 
to various resources. You can even attach it to load balancers and that's a good use case because if you have servers that are dev servers and you want them to be load balanced automatically, you can add this label to your load balancer so that they, it can automatically get attached to your load balancer or your firewall when you create it, once it is created. Once you create a server, instead of having to go to the load balancer to manually add it, if you just add a label here, that label will be used to add it wherever you define. So of course, I'm going to leave that out. We don't need it. And then cloud config, maybe you want to install various things in advance. You can click there to see how you can install or remove various things in advance. So just click there. This is something that is nice to know. Maybe you want to remove Apache and install Nginx. You can do that here. So if you come here, you can see how you can create an, a cloud init file. Just start with that line and then users that this is going to create a user update packages. This is just an example that you can look at. So this is a full file and you can go and find tutorials for that. The server name, server name here, let's choose a name like panel r.bizanosa.com. If you want to deploy more than one server, just click there. You can add another server, give it a different server name. You want another one, another server name. So I'm just going to remove the two and deploy the one. When you're ready to deploy, just click create and buy now. So let the server deploy and then we're going to see how to log into that server. And just remember that we did deploy our server with an SSH key. So we're going to see how to how to log in with the key. So just give it time to deploy. At least we have an IP address. We can copy the IP. So to log into your server, you'll just come back here. And remember, we're going to log in with our private SSH key. So to log in, we're just going to do SSH and the user for our server by default will be root. Root at the IP address for, our, for the server. Shift insert to paste. And then, of course, you need to log in with your private key. So the identity of the key will be dash I. Our key is that, the one without dot pub. So when you generate the key, make sure you copy the two links that you're provided. The two paths that you're provided here, just save them somewhere. So I'll do shift insert. I will copy once again. There we go. Shift insert. Let's see if our server has been deployed. All right. So our server is online. You can see the green mark and it's telling us that it's running. That means that our server is online. And we can now log in. SSH, the user, IP address of your server, dash I for the identity of your private key. Just remember that we also say that if you don't want this path here, if you don't want this path, you can replace the entire path with you can replace the entire path with a tilde. If you just put a tilde there, it's the same as saying that. So I'll press enter to log into the server. It's asking us to confirm the key identity of the server. Is it a server we know or someone is doing something fishy? So since it's a new server, I'm just going to type yes. So this is actually a good thing because if you haven't done anything to your server, you haven't changed, you haven't reset your server, you haven't done anything, and you try to log into your server on the same computer and you get this message, just know that something is fishy. So that's why this is important. The first time you log in, it's okay to see it. But if you see it again and you haven't changed anything on your server, that means that something is fishy. There we go. We are logged into our, our Hetzner server. And I'm just going to do Control L to clear the screen. I can update the server. Remember, it was an Ubuntu server. You can confirm which server it is by doing host name CTL. Host name control. Type it correctly. Host name controller. There we go. So you can see it is an Ubuntu 22.04 server x86 Hetzner virtualization KVM. Right. Let's update the server. Control L. So we're going to update. If you're the root user, you don't need to use sudo. For habits sake, I'm just going to use sudo. sudo apt 
update let's see if there are any updates so if you're on debian and you do sudo apt update there is a chance you'll get the error sudo is not available you can just do apt install sudo so 47 packages can be upgraded so to upgrade them we'll just do sudo apt upgrade grade let the update continue i'll press ok i'll just press tab to go to ok and then press enter there we go everything is now updated and i'll do Control l to clear the screen so there you go you've deployed your server using an ssh key and you've also seen how to log into your server with that ssh key if you want to install anything in this server now you can do it i have a tutorial for how to set up your server initially and then install a control panel and then install wordpress so if that's something you're interested in i have videos for that and i will put the links in the description if i forget please just remind me and then rebuild so rebuild is a very important one because you'll usually find that maybe you're installing a control panel you install it something happens and with control panels you need to do it on a fresh server just come in here and reset your server i was using ubuntu 20 so i can just search for ubuntu if i want to use ubuntu i can go with ubuntu again or if i want to replace the operating system i can go with debian if i want to replace it maybe i want to go with something like sent os you can use centos as well and there are also other images you can see there's wordpress all these other images you can use them to reset your server finally if you want to delete your server you'll just come in here under delete delete the server you can delete the ip as well or you can keep it as unassigned ipv6 as well if you want to use it you can delete it or you can keep it unassigned but this is free this action is irreversible please confirm by entering the server name i will confirm copy paste delete the server if you do have any questions let me know so if you use the link in the description and you don't have a hetzner account you can get 20 euros free credits that's it for this video if you have any questions feel free to let me know